So when I did the video about how powerful is the SCP Foundation, I did a lot of comparing it to other groups of interest in the SCP uh, universe. And one thing that that brought up uh, in my mind was an additional question. And that is, what is the most powerful non-Foundation GOI? That is to say, in the SCP Foundation universe, which other group of interest is probably the most powerful? Which is the biggest rival for the SCP Foundation? Or at least, uh, competitor, we'll put it that way. Now, when we look at this, we can discount regional groups. We can discount um, the Horizon Initiative, the Office for the Reclamation of Islamic Artifacts, or the GRU. We can also discount ones that really aren't like, power and influence are not their focus. Stuff like Herman Fuller's Circus of the Disquieting, or uh, Anderson Robotics, which just does work to make, you know, androids and robotics. And then there's also a question of which canonical representation of the GOI we're talking about. Because there are certainly versions of the Sarkic cults in the Church of the Broken God that are massively powerful. But are they more powerful than, say, the SCP Foundation or some of the others that we would, we're going to talk about a little bit later? I don't think so. There's also alternate universe GOIs, which in their universe may be the most powerful organizations that there are. The Shark Punching Center, silly though it is, in that world may be the most powerful group of interest. The Alex... I never could get this pronunciation right. Let's see if I can do it. Alexia Love... No, Alex... Alexi Lva... Alexiolva University is, uh, you know, in its own universe, side, let's say, like a side universe adjacent to ours, where the Roman Empire and the Cry, this is a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, but the important part is that it exists outside of our reality, but it does bleed in from time to time. It may be incredibly powerful. It, I would imagine it's probably not, actually, <laughs> but because um, it's a single university representing, you know, a whole other dimension so um, and stuff like that you know little things that we could argue back and forth all day about but when we talk about the most powerful groups of interest I think two names are probably going to come up more than anything else the global occult coalition and Marshall Carter and dark and of course you know you've got your rebellions you've got your uh, separatist groups like the serpent's hand or the or uh, the Chaos Insurgency. The Chaos Insurgency is a break, you know, breakaway from the SCP Foundation. So it literally can't be much more powerful than the SCP Foundation. It's a threat, sure, but it's not more powerful than. And then groups like Anderson Robotics or Dr. Wondertainment, uh, sometimes even The Factory, who do work for other groups. Prometheus Labs is another example. Who do work for other companies, like Marshall, Carter, and Dark. Marshall, Carter, and Dark... We'll, we'll talk about it first, because I, per, I have a personal... I like Marshall, Carter, and Dark. It's probably my favorite GOIs. And I think Marshall, Carter, and Dark is probably one of the most powerful GOIs simply because of the influence that they hold. And we didn't talk about this in the SCP Foundation video where we were talking about how powerful it is, but there is a such thing as soft power, the ability to influence other people who have power of their own to do the things that you want. Marshall, Carter, and Dark cultivates relationships with the rich and powerful of the world. It even says in their GOI hub specifically that they could, if they really wanted to, plunge the world into a thermonuclear war. But of course they don't. Why would they do that? There's no profit in it. It's, it's interesting, to be honest with you. Marshall Carter and Dark and the Global Occult Coalition are reflections of the SCP Foundation in a way, in that they both are very strongly against lifting the veil of secrecy surrounding anomalies. Marshall Carter and Dark does it because, well, as long as anomalies are, if, if, as long as people don't realize how common anomalies are, then the rich and famous and powerful will pay out the nose for them, thinking that they're special. If everybody knew that you could just go down to the go down the street and talk to some guy, talk to some anomalous artist to create something, then you wouldn't pay thousands and thousands of dollars to Marshall Carter and Dark at an auction. Marshall Carter and Dark and their influence on the world at large uh, really is competitive with, you know, it's the it's the secret, you know, it, there's a conspiratorial and uh, uh, conspiracy theory type stuff where it's like, oh, there's these people that control the world, ain't, you know, lizard, uh, reptile people. Um, Marshall Carter and Dark really, really fulfill that role in the SCP Foundation's universe. 
They are the man behind the man. They are the ones who support up tin pot dictators if it works for them, or democracies if it works for them. The only important thing to them is, how profitable is it? They own senators, they own uh, congressmen, they own presidents, they own kings and queens. These are the people who owe their allegiance to Marshall, Carter, and Dark in one way or the other. And interestingly enough, it talks in the Marshall, Carter, and Dark documents about how they really only have maybe a hundred or just a little over, somewhere between 100 and 200 employees worldwide, that speaks less to their inability to, say, compete on a military level. <laughs> Private armies exist for a reason. Uh, just because they only have one or 200 employees doesn't mean they don't have a ton of private contractors working for them. There's probably thousands upon thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of people who are doing various jobs for Marshall, Carter, and Dark as independent contractors. And those people are the best of the best in the world, in, in the, whatever particular skill that you're looking for, the people that Marshall, Carter, and Dark are working with are probably the best at that thing. Now we can talk more if we wanted to about what makes Marshall, Carter, and Dark the most powerful GOI in the world, or we can talk a little bit about how the Global Co Coalition may be the most powerful in the world. So, why would the Global... Well, the Global Occult Coalition is just a... literally, like, Marshall Carter and Dark has some similarities with the SCB Foundation, in that it, you know, wants to keep the veil up, um, it keeps things in containment until they're sold, at the very least, and it does research on their SC... on, you know, on anomalies, I keep wanting to call them SCPs, but it does research on anomalies to find out how they work so it can make more of them. Uh, the SCP Foundation has shades of that. It doesn't necessarily research them so it can reproduce them, but it does research. It keeps things in containment and it keeps the veil up. But the Global Occult Coalition is a true reflection of the SCP Foundation. It's the reason why, because the SCP Foundation itself is already one of the most powerful GOIs, if you consider it to be one, that the Global Occult Coalition, as a reflection of that, is also, competitively, a GOI that is incredibly powerful. The Global Occult Coalition, even in just its name, has a global reach. It doesn't matter if you're living in Russia, or if you're living in Mexico, or if you're living in Australia, or if you're living in Zaire. You will run into problems with the Global Occult Coalition if they know about you. I've said this before in previous videos. There, it, Again, conspiracy theories. I, that, that's the interesting thing about uh, the SCP Foundation wiki, and I, it, it's interesting that we have now have the, um, what's it called, Parawatch which really kind of steers into this. But think of almost any conspiracy theory you can think of, and the, the SCP Foundation has in some way adapted it into an actual feature of the universe. And for the Global Occult Coalition, that's the... I don't know if it's wholly American. There's probably other countries that have this exact same sort of thing, but there's a, a small subset of, like, super conservatives in America who think that the UN is this militant group that's going to invade and take all of our sovereignty away. And the Global Occult Coalition is literally, what if that was true? Except with anomalies. But given that the UN has global reach and nearly, well, let's not say nearly infinite funding because the Glo the UN has uh, constantly has funding problems, but I would bet the Global Occult Coalition has figured out ways to get around that. Because they're a lot less reticent to use anomalies to their advantage. If the Global Occult Coalition can find an anomaly to give them a cash infusion uh, that would put them, you know, leagues ahead of their competition, they'll use it, just like Marshall, Carter, and Darkwood. Whereas the SCB Foundation is sort of self-limited in that sense. If they found something, they might use it. There are some versions, some canonical representations of the Foundation that would use it, but the general, in in the general inclination for the SCB Foundation is put it in a box and let no one else use it. And I'd say that these three organizations, the SCP Foundation, the Global Occult Coalition, and Marshall, Carter, and Dark, represent three very different kinds of power. In a lot of video games, especially strategy games, you've got three different avenues towards victory. You've got economic, military, and research. The SCP Foundation would be the research path. The Global Occult Coalition would be the military path. And of course, Marshall, Carter, and Dark would be your economic path. And because of this, I think together these three represent essentially a triad of power in the universe that is the SCP Foundation. And sure, if the Global Occult Coalition went to war with the SCP Foundation, maybe one of them would win and one of them would lose. But the important part to recall here is that they essentially represent different spheres of influence and different ways to do things. So which one of those three is more powerful kind of depends on your view of which 
type of power is most important. We live in a world with huge economic disparities between the rich and the poor, and that is the exact thing that Marshall Carter and Dark represents. We live in a world where, you know, let's say political or military uprisings in various locations require international interference in order to keep them from turning into wider wars that kill tons of people, and that's what the Global Occult Coalition is all about. The world is big, and it needs some sort of overarching police force for anomalies in the, in the SCP Foundation's universe, I should say. I want to make it clear I'm not like talking about the actual world and why these are important. And then the SCP Foundation, all about the research. Keep things in boxes, find out how they work, and then put them away forever. And the more you know about how they work, the more you can know about how the other ones might work. And I don't necessarily think that any of those groups isn't necessarily more powerful than the others. Like I said, I think they just have different types of power. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. And then, if you really want to help support the channel, head on over to patreon.com forward slash dcimmerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including our special pledgers, Lawful Evil at $60 a month, VV at $100 a month, and Dr. J Redacted at $100 a month. Thank you for letting me know that I'm not alone out here, and I'll see you all again on Tuesday.